What's up, nature freaks? Dave here from Nature In Your Face. I am down in San Diego County, California, and my goal this week is to find the big four. The four rattlesnake species that can be found here in San Diego County. You've got the red diamond rattlesnake, the speckled rattlesnake, the sidewinder, and the southern pacific rattlesnake. Now I only have four days to do it. It's not going to be easy, but with a little bit of luck and a lot of hard work, I'm determined to find these four rattlesnake species. So sit back and get ready for a little venomous nature in your face. Nature in your face! Alright, so we're going to start out at higher elevations. There's only two species of rattlesnake of the four that can be found up here. That would be the red diamond as well as the speckled rattlesnake. This is perfect habitat. If you notice, there's a lot of boulders, tons of places for these snakes to hide from predators. And also, there's a lot of rats and mice. You see them running around these trails all the time. Plenty of cover for them. These snakes like to slither into these cracks looking for, for things to eat. So, let's we'll see if we can get some luck trying to find the first two of the four species of rattlesnakes here in San Diego County. So I just found my first snake coiled up under this cactus. Man, my heart is racing right now. Of the rattlesnakes, the one I thought I'd have the hardest time finding was this one, the red diamond rattlesnake. It's federally protected, has a really small range here in Southern California. This one's still pretty small. It's gonna get a lot bigger. Easily the largest of the four rattlesnakes in San Diego County. Now what I love most about these guys is how well known they are for being one of the more chill rattlesnakes. They really don't act defensively when approached. You can see this one's not even rattling. I would really have to provoke this snake to get it to strike. Now interestingly, even though they're very large, the venom is comparatively weak for such a large rattlesnake. But, make no mistake about it, they're still really dangerous because of the venom yield. They have huge venom glands, and that's why you can see that the, uh, the head's much wider than the neck, because the venom glands are located right there behind the eye. Now this one's a really light color. Most of the ones I've seen out here, they're more red, so that's kind of weird. But man, alright, so I've got one of the four rattlesnakes. Looks like this guy's had enough of me shoving my video camera in front of his face. Starting to slither away. Speaking of slithering away, time for me to get out of here. It's been a long day. I'll pick up where I left off tomorrow and we're gonna go and try to find our speckled rattlesnake. Two down, two to go. I'm halfway there because look who just crawled out of this rock crevice, a bright pink phase speckled rattlesnake. Look at this color, that is crazy. I mentioned earlier that they're highly variable. I figured I might have a chance of finding a pink one. They tend to match the color of the rocks they live around. If I was in an area where the rocks were a lighter color, I'd have a better chance of finding a white phase speckled rattlesnake. Now it's moving away from me. That's only because as far as the snake's concerned, I'm a potential threat. The pits on the front of the face can detect heat. It allows this snake to see a thermal image of my body, and I'm obviously way too big to be prey. So its first instinct is gonna to be to flee. I have never found a speckled rattlesnake in the daytime, but uh, the weather's been pretty mild, so they'll come out and hunt before it starts getting too hot. Mammals make up a good portion of their diet, but they also eat birds. We actually found one in a low tree branch a few years ago. Now they're way more nervous and defensive than the red diamond rattlesnake. This guy definitely deserves a lot of respect. Okay, uh, good find. Time for me to say goodbye to Mr. Pinky. I'm going to move off and I'm going to try to find a white faced speckled rattlesnake. Well, that red color faced speckled rattlesnake, certainly beautiful, certainly very cool. As we mentioned, the color and pattern of these snakes is indicative of the boulders and the surrounding substrate in which they live. I don't know if you guys noticed, but right over here to my right is another speckled rattlesnake. Difference is, that one is not red. It's the same color as the white and black boulders that it lives among. Perfectly camouflaged, you can barely see them. Now, that is a dangerous snake. It's a baby, it's only a foot long, it has one button on its tail, but it has an incredibly toxic venom. It has a high venom yield. Now, the venom is mainly hemotoxic, which severely affects tissue and blood, but it also has a degree of neurotoxic venom. 
which affects your heart and your lungs. Not a snake you want to get bit by here in the desert. Just wanted to kind of compare the pink to this beautiful white phase speckled rattlesnake. Okay, I'm back in the car. I'm driving out of the higher elevations. I'm headed south. I'm gonna try to find the Southern Pacific rattlesnake. They are not found in the same areas as these other three snakes are, so I have to put a few miles on the car, no big deal. Sorry about the camera shake. Well, I was starting to get discouraged. I was actually headed back to my car when I spotted this snake crossing the trail about 25 yards in front of me. A Southern Pacific rattlesnake. My lifer Southern Pacific. Never found one before, so this is a first for me, guys. How cool is this? Uh, it is. It has not stopped rattling from the moment I walked up on him. It's extremely defensive. Notice I didn't say aggressive. It's just letting me know to stay away from it. I call this guy the backyard rattlesnake because it can be found in urban areas, which is really unfortunate because more often than not, it leads to the snake being killed. But uh, what I tell people is you have to keep in mind that this snake's not moving into the neighborhoods. People are building homes in and around their habitat. But either way, it's inevitable. Bites are gonna occur. This snake is no joke. Like the other rattlesnakes I found, possesses a very dangerous venom poses a very serious threat to your life. So you do have to be careful when you're out here hiking. This particular habitat also with this grass, it makes these things uh, invisible. They can hide deep under that brush and you can be looking right in front of you still not see them. Well, I got my third of four snakes. Time to go down south to the low valley and I'm gonna get my sidewinder. I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to do it. There you go. I just found the fourth and final rattlesnake of my trip, the sidewinder. This one is the most specialized. It's the smallest of the San Diego County rattlesnakes with the weakest venom, also has the lowest venom yield. The rattle is not quite as audible as those other three larger rattlesnakes just because of the size, but um, you can still hear it. Another really cool thing about this rattlesnake, it's also called the horned rattler, and that's because if you notice, there's two enlarged scales above each eye. It looks like little eyelashes. Scientists aren't exactly sure of their purpose, but these snakes like to bury themselves in the sand. So it's been theorized that the scales might keep excess sand away from the eyes, or it might just cast a shadow over the eyes to keep the sun out. So it's like almost like wearing a pair of shades. Now, what the Sidewinder is most famous for, and it's obvious where it gets its name, is the unique form of locomotion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the camera off, I'm gonna move the snake to an open area so I can video it sidewinding on the desert sand. This is really cool. All right, now the reason this snake is able to get away with slithering on this scorching hot sand that would literally blister your feet if you walked on it barefoot is because at any given time, only two points of the snake's body touch the sand. So they can come out on the hottest days, slither across that scorching desert sand and not get burned. You do have to eventually get in the shade so that they don't overheat, but they can move from place to place. No other snake would be able to do that for a long period of time like the Sidewinder. Look how cool that is, how he just moves across this desert. Well, there you go, guys. All four of the San Diego County rattlesnakes. The Red Diamond Rattlesnake, the Sidewinder Rattlesnake, the Speckled Rattlesnake, and the Southern Pacific Rattlesnake. Took every bit of four days in my little Nissan beater vehicle that I rented. Got stuck in the sand once, no big deal. It all worked out. Super excited to have found all those rattlesnakes for you. If you guys like this video, please hit subscribe. Make sure you hit that little notification ding-a-ling-a-ling -a -ling bell because I want to bring you a lot more nature in your face.